me tell you something else that's interesting that I noticed in my uh, uh, research, not researching this, this is superficial research, I'm not really a researcher, but um, they talk about the relationship between man and the primate. The primates have 24 pairs of genes, including the chimpanzee. The human only has 23 pairs. Supposedly, the second of the 23 pairs is really a double gene that just got somehow or other screwed up. An interesting thing that you say, first of all, just as an aside, what are you saying? You're saying that two genes that are perfectly uh, functional somehow or other got messed up in the human being, and yet the human being is far superior, far superior than any gorilla and any chimp. Well, we're not as adept that they could climb a tree much better than ours, and they're stronger than we are. But in terms of our functionality, we're light years ahead of them. Uh, how, can, how is it that we have defective genetics compared to the, to, to the chimpanzee? The chimpanzee's got the 24 pairs, as does the gorilla, and the chimpanzee and the gorilla do not have a common ancestor. Man and the chimpanzee does. How does that work? I don't know. You're going to have to answer that yourself. But now we come to an interesting thing. There are 23 pairs of genes in the human genetic code. And one of them, there are 22 pairs that are true pairs. The 23rd determines sex, the sex of the person, which would mean that one half of the 23rd will make the person a girl, the other one will make a boy. I know it's more complicated, I know it's a combination of both. But just to make it simple, for the stupid people out there, 22 are pairs, that's 44, but among the, the other two genes, there's male and female identities there, so we'll say one for the male, one for the female, we're just making it simple, remember. I'm not arguing with the di with, with the scientists out there, but you understand what I'm saying, that primarily those two genes, really one of them gives the identity for the man, the other one for the woman. That's very interesting, because do you know what the name of man is in, in the Bible? Of course, it's Adam. Well, i written out Adam according to the Torah. If you could take a look over here, it's Aleph Dalid Mem, Adam. Not Adam, but Adam. And if you were to, you know, Hebrew letters, besides having sounds, also have numbers associated with them. I'm, that's Hebrew 101. That's Torah 101. There's a numerology associated with the letters. That's how we Jews have counted since the development of the Jewish people people of Israel. So the Aleph of Adam, of Adam, is equal to one. That's the first letter of the alphabet. The Dalit, that's the fourth letter. It's equal to four. The Mem, that's the thirteenth letter of the Hebrew alphabet. This is a final Mem. And it's equivalent to forty. Because when you get to ten, you get to, 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 to tens, till the letter Kuf, and then you have a hundred. And then there's Reish, Shin, Tuf, which is 200, 300, 400. And then we have the five um, final letters, which is equal to more. But the Mem stands for 40 in general. So now, if you take 40 plus 4 plus 1, how much does that equal to? It equals to 45. What's so significant about that? Because man is said to be in God's image. God's image doesn't mean that God has got a face and a beard. I know this, the, 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 the JC freaks, the Yushka freaks out there, they think that God's got a beard and God looks like human beings. It's not true. The human being is not like God. We're just a bunch of meat and, and blood and all kinds of disgusting things that will putrefy the minute we die. God is eternal. God doesn't putrefy. God is infinite, and God has no form. But what does it mean that man is in God's image? It means that our soul is similar, parallel.
parallel to the godly elements that are found running the world. One of the, one of the translation of the word Adam means Adama, which is earth, but it also means something that is similar. Adama le Elyon. Man is similar or parallels that which is above. What do we parallel? All of man's functions, all of man's abilities, parallel what goes on in the spiritual world that God runs. And God's name is spelled Yud and then a He and a Vav and a He. We don't pronounce the name because of respect of God. If you are to write out those four letters fully, Yud, Yud, Vav, Dalet, He, He, Aleph, Vav, Vav, Aleph, Vav, He, He, Aleph, you wind up also with 45. And so the number 45, which is the equivalent of the name Adam, is the equivalent of God's name. And so the genetic code, which is 23 pairs, is 22 plus one for the boy and one for the girl. They're a total of 46, but each one, the man and the woman, each one of them has only one half of that 23rd gene. I'm simplifying it. I know you're going to argue. Together it's 45 man parallels God in God's image. That's what it means. We don't look like God. Our soul, our construct, our personality, the ability to choose, to have freedom of choice, intellect, and so on, these are things that only God has. That's what I wish to convey to you from this stupid rabbi.